state company that owns it. They make a payment to the state. Uh, uh, so, uh, and, and in the end, the bottom line is the state gets uh, uh, gets a windfall of about $1.2 million a year. We will take that $1.2 million, put it into the risk pool. That will result in property tax savings for Iowa. Uh, uh, who's next? Do we have an order? No, go, go ahead, Jack. Uh, I just uh, welcome the uh, early in the session here. And I just want to make a comment about the funding of the community colleges. Uh, the, the recommendation of the governor, in my opinion, was disappointing. Uh, but uh, the, this caucus has always been, and both caucuses have always been uh, very supportive of community college funding, and we will do better than the governor. Uh, uh, the, year, the two sessions that uh, we were tied in the Senate, uh, both those sessions were extended uh, beyond regular time, and most of that time was, uh, was fighting for increased appropriations for the community colleges. And prior to that, we had to go back to 1993 uh, 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 when I chaired the higher education budget and, and the fight between, between Branstad and the Republicans over community college funding. So, uh, so we, we, we will do better than the, than the governor. We've got a long history of being friends of the community college and, the, and, and, and what they're doing for the state of Iowa. In an interim committee, we had this session on, on, on one of the biggest problems we have in Iowa is the shortage of skilled workers. And, and to fix that, it's got to be through the community colleges. And every business in this state uh, knows that and are, are reminded us of that. So uh, uh, this, uh, this party is not going to uh, step back on that issue. Uh, we'll be there in the end, so stay tuned. <laughs> Next week in the House, we'll likely see a uh, movement on uh, two uh, of our priorities uh, at the committee level. It will be a short week because of the holiday on Monday. Uh, but in the Veterans Affairs Committee, uh, which is uh, newly chaired by Representative Ray Wilkelbach, who's back from Iraq, uh, the uh, Veterans Job Security Bill will likely move out of committee next week. That's a bill that will uh, create some uh, state uh, teeth. Uh, mirroring the federal law, uh, protecting veterans who are coming back from Iraq, making sure that they have uh, comparable jobs with comparable pay, um, and making sure that that federal law is enforced here at the state level. So that bill will likely move out of committee next week. Also, on the area of illegal immigration, uh, we filed that bill, uh, uh, I think uh, two days ago, I believe it was read in uh, yesterday. Uh, that bill uh, will probably begin subcommittee work next week in the labor committee, and that will be establishing uh, criminal fines, uh, including the uh, jail time for each offense as it relates to knowingly uh, skirting immigration laws as well as civil penalties. Uh, we'll also be dealing with the misclassification of workers in certain industries. Uh, so those are, there will be two of our priorities that will begin the substantive committee work next week, one of which is likely to move out of the committee, that's the uh, uh, Veterans Bill. So that we're encouraged with the start of the session, uh, and uh, um, we're going to have uh, some differences with the governor's office, but we're going to be working together in a respectful way as we work through those differences. Last thing I'd just like to talk about is, uh, is in regards to some of the remarks that were made earlier in the week. Uh, we do want to work with Republicans on, uh, on numerous different issues this year. But I know on the opening day there was a lot of remarks made about, the, uh, about property taxes going up by half a billion dollars in the next, by the year 2010. Uh, we had staff sit down and review the budget under the last five years of Republican rule in the House, where Christopher Rance was the majority leader for one year and the Speaker, Speaker of the House for four years when property taxes went up statewide by $560 million. Um, I think, I think it's a little, it gets to the point where it's a little bit disingenuous to sit there and argue about what we're doing when their own record uh, shows that property taxes rose at about that same level for that same period of time while he was in leadership. But we'd also like to look at some of the things that we can work with them on. I think we're very concerned about the silo bill. You're talking about a guy that uh, was not just a sponsor of that bill, was the lead sponsor. I remember him having the discussions back with me in the mid-90s to sign on to that bill. After we had a couple conversations, I signed on to the side of the bill. Uh, both of our communities passed it, it's now statewide, and now he's talking about having reservations about doing a side of the bill statewide for school infrastructure for all schools in the state. Um, if we're gonna really try to address uh, education needs and also try to address infrastructure needs, we need to have honest discussions and not have political gamesmanship. 
Uh, we need to rise above that and try to work forward in, in areas where we can find commonality. And it's pretty hard to when you have the minority leader sitting there on the Republican side after he's, uh, every group we talk to about schools, the first thing he always talks about is silo. He's very proud of it, he should be. But we should continue to push that forward for education and try to set up some money that we could do some infrastructure needs here in the state as well. So hopefully some of this will change in the weeks ahead, but uh, we're going to remain committed to seeing what we can do for infrastructure. We're going to focus on what we can do to lower commercial industrial property taxes. Uh, the Senate's going to be running that bill next week. Uh, that'll uh, We will be running that bill as well soon after we get it from the Senate, but we remain optimistic about the things we can do this session. Questions? There was some discussion about the um, the funds this morning in the House side. Can you respond to the whole senior living trust fund? Um, not particularly, but I'll just tell you this. The bottom line is, senior living, listen, when we took over control, we filled up the reserve funds. We're putting more money into the senior living trust fund. Uh, they're arguing that we didn't. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, our figures are what, 170 to 182, 182 million dollars. They have spent it down to seven million. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, the point there, I don't know what their point was on that, other than they liked hearing about Scott Racker liked hearing about civility since he's the executive director of civility in the state. But the part that I just thought was funny was is uh, um, well, I didn't mean that to be a joke, but I mean he does do character. Certainly nothing because. we've ever been accused of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate to say I was a character in school, so I guess character does count, but in a different way with me. Uh, but, but the bottom line is we have built up those reserve funds when they drained them down, and I think it's hard for them to admit to the fact that we, we put money back into them. Is there money coming out of them? Their remark about that is true, but we're making sure that we target it towards programs for seniors that will reduce them going into long-term care facilities. Uh, they were using that for funds to pay for Medicaid. Uh, that wasn't doing anything to help uh, uh, keep people from going into institutions long term. Uh, so we want to keep our focus on managing the budget. Uh, if they don't like the fact that we've done uh, a better job than they have in the last four or five, uh, that's fine. But uh, we're going to continue to try to put more money in that fund. We're going to uh, we're going to try to build up those uh, reserves. We, we're going to have to. Uh, put some additional money in there because of the growth in the budget. We're going to do that, and we're going to focus on putting more money in the senior living trust. And yeah, we'll, we'll spend money out of there for seniors this year. And do you share Jack's views on community college? Funds? Yes, we we agree that. Uh, um, listen, we're going to have some disagreements from time to time with the government. We had some disagreements last year in regards to um, what did we disagree? It's going to have to take a minute. Okay, we had a disagreement on uh, 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 property taxes. Um, yeah, yeah, we didn't put the uh, we didn't put as much on into paying the, on paying the um, property taxes out of the ending uh, mm -hmm. out of the general fund instead of out of the ending balance. That was probably the biggest disagreement we had last year. Um, but I mean, it was one of those things that I originally said we should do fifty or sixty cents on the cigarette tax. We agreed to do a dollar, put it into a health care fund. Uh, so we're going to have our differences. Um, Democrats are pretty passionate in the legislature about community colleges. So we're going to probably, and I think last year we went a little bit higher than he did as well. So I mean, uh, we're going to focus on putting more resources into community the, colleges. The governor recommended a budget that, that in a lot of ways fits with our priorities. Um, uh, more, more money for higher education, more money for K-12 education, more money for health care. We think it was a budget that reflects the needs of middle class islands. Uh, so it, it's a budget to improve things in the state. We're going to come up with a budget that improves things even more. Any other disagreements you see uh, on the horizon or differences that you're going to have to work on um, uh, now that you've had a chance to look further at the government's budget? Uh, you said you no, expected no, something. No. no, I think we will uh, we'll the work. Only... Governor proposes a budget, and that's his constitutional responsibility, and he has done that. We will now assemble a budget. And we have 150 people, and for us to focus, to, I'm sure there's people that have a disagreement with every single line item in that budget. Uh, out of one out of the 150 legislators here. We're going to work to develop a consensus inside both of our caucuses and then between our two chambers on what this budget's going to look like. And we're going to have a budget
budget that reflects the needs of middle class families in this state. And we're, I think when we're all said and done, we'll be proud of that budget. I think when, we're all, when it's all said and done, community colleges will be, yep, we're going to be able to continue to provide opportunities for, for people to